In 1989, Liu Xiaobo left a comfortable visiting scholarship at Columbia University to return to his native China and thrust himself into a maelstrom. Thousands of students had occupied Tiananmen Square in Beijing to demand democratic changes and an end to Communist Party corruption, and without hesitation Mr. Liu, a literary scholar with a dissident's reputation in China, flew home to join them. In the square he kept vigil, in solidarity with the young. But he also feared for their lives and ultimately implored them to leave, warning that the Chinese troops who had arrived to quell the disturbance might soon open fire. The soldiers did, massacring hundreds. For Mr. Liu, a mission of political opposition was born. Risking prison, he became one of the Beijing regime's most outspoken critics, and in 2010 he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. But he received the honor in absentia. By then he was in prison, where he would remain until his death in July. The cause was liver cancer, apparently in an advanced stage, though few knew. The authorities did not disclose his condition until late June. Mr. Liu was just one of a remarkable roster of disparate people who died this year having fought, as their eulogists might say, the good fight, an expression that rings of cliché but also of truth. They had fought, and fought some more, for causes larger than themselves. They were rarely famous. Their names may have found their way into obituary headlines, but they were not headline names as we know the term not like those of the many luminaries who died along with them this year. But they were remembered. Edith Windsor was one. She etched her name in history in United States v. Windsor, the landmark Supreme Court case that brought same-sex married couples federal recognition and rights that only married heterosexuals had enjoyed. Betty Dukes, a greeter at a California Walmart, waged a similar campaign. She led a class action lawsuit against her employer on behalf of 1.5 million women who worked in its stores, accusing it of discriminating against them in pay, promotions, and more. She lost in the Supreme Court, but M.S. Dukes, a Baptist minister, had the consolation of knowing that she had given public voice to an army of easily expendable low wage workers who, as a sister in law of hers said, had been afraid to rock the boat. Norma McCorvey, paradoxically better known in anonymity, had far-reaching impact. As Jane Roe, she stood in for millions of women in Roe v. Wade, the case that led to legalized abortion in the United States. She was never the ideal rallying point, however, lifted as she was out of obscurity to join, reluctantly, a legal challenge to Texas abortion statutes. And she ultimately switched sides compelled by religious scruples to oppose the very thing Rose stood for. When she died, each side in the debate pondered her uneasily as its imperfect own. The cause of racial justice lost champions in 2017, among them Roy Innes, whose Congress of Racial Equality, born in black power militancy, moved rightward. By contrast, Roger Wilkins, a protege of Thurgood Marshall, had emerged as a persuasive advocate at the centers of power in government, academia, philanthropy, and journalism.